Italia. Getting old. Just getting old, you know? I feel it. I feel it in my body. Well, maybe because I went to Walmart the other day, working on a project, of course. So I got to go to Walmart, source some materials, and uh, yeah, I go to I go to check out. They get boy, they know how to get you. I go to check out, and they had like these bins, and this one bin was full of these sacks of Tootsie Rolls. It was like a burlap sack of Tootsie Rolls. And it's like rollback price, four dollars. Like four it was like four ninety nine. You got to see the sack of Tootsie Rolls. I'm telling you right now. I what you could parachute with the sack. Oh my god. Remember doing that as a kid? You take your pillowcase and you jump off the couch, like with make a parachute thing? Like, yeah. Right onto your knees. Yeah, that's probably why you can barely get up out of a Balka lounge today. I bought the fucking Tootsie Rolls. What do you want me to do? Then when I come home, I got to hide them. So my wife doesn't see. Anyhow. You ever come home from work and you got to eat lunch? You're so hungry. But you're too lazy to meet, eat lunch? Yeah, I think I ate about 30 Tootsie Rolls. And I took the wrappers and I, I just like mashed the wrappers together and threw it in the garbage, not thinking. It was like a softball. It looked like I was on, I, I, it was looked like the beginnings of the world's biggest rubber band ball with Tootsie Roll wrappers. I threw it in the garbage. And then later on that day, I forgot what I was doing. I was on, I was putting a dent in the couch. I, we got cable back and I don't know what it is. I love watching cable now. I haven't had normal TV in so long. It's almost like I love watching YouTube. Get it? But I select what's on. I'm constantly in control, right? So when I, when I go and I, I turn on cable vision, it's like, it's a little random. It's like I'm putting on shows like, ah. I might watch that. I'll watch it. I was watching The Godfather and The Godfather 2. Like, I need to see those movies again. I love them. I love them. I turn it on. It's The Godfather talking to Michael. Remember at the end of The Godfather? I, it just part cracks me up to no end. And The Godfather's like, How's your son, Michael? And Michael's like, I talk about this all the time. I don't know, it's my favorite scene in the movie. He goes, He likes to read the funny papers, Pop. And The Godfather goes, He likes to read the funny papers. The end. All right. I mean, it's everybody asleep right now. Come on. <sighs> what was Michael's wife's name? Remember when she she asks him if she killed uh, her sister's husband? What was that guy's name? I mean, it sucks if I don't know the names of the characters, right? He's like, Michael, I got to know if, if you had him killed. He's, he's like, I told you. I told you, Kate. Don't ask me about my business. And she's, Michael, I have to know. I said, don't ask me about my business, Kate. But, Michael, I got... Don't ask me about my business! It's great stuff. He's like, I'm going to allow you this one time to ask me about my affairs. Did you do it, Michael? 
And he's like, no. And that, that was like, lying to his wife like that for some reason transformed. To me, that was the moment he transformed into the Godfather. It wasn't when, he, when, when the guys were kissing his hand and then they shut the door. That was the moment. That was like, because he lied to his, his love, you know, the love of his life. I mean, what the fuck? All right, so I'm sitting on the couch, and my wife goes, May, come over here. And I'm like, oh, what is it now? I love it how she, I got to walk over like a little schoolboy. I, I probably get three of these a day, and then I got to come walking over like a mope. Yes, honey, what is it, honey? She's like, did you eat all these uh, Tootsie Rolls? And I looked down in the trash, and I was unconscious. What, like I was like insulin unconscious when I threw the wrappers into the garbage. And I looked down, and there's an enormous pile of Tootsie Roll wrappers. And I, I gotta say, I was shocked when I saw it. And uh, she says, "Did you eat all those? Like so disappointed? Did you eat all those Tootsie Rolls?" And I looked at the pile, and I looked at her, and I was like, Yes, I ate all the Tootsie Rolls. With, like, a guilty look on my face. I couldn't, I was guilty. I was guilty. Like the dog, when the, when the, when the dog, Chewy, do you have my sock? And the, my, my filthy sock, is he loves filthy socks in his mouth. What is wrong with dogs? And my filthy sock is hanging out of his mouth, and he's looking at me like this. I have your sock, master. I mean, so there you have it. So what does she do? She takes the Tootsie Rolls, and she hid them. You know how I know she hid them? Because after I got done, listen, I don't know about you. When I get done eating dinner, I need sugar, baby. All right? It's, it's just a command. It's like, eat dinner, then have dessert. Yes! We've been doing this for thousands of years! It's just what happens! There's this natural inclination for dessert. And it's like, okay, you filled your gut with food, you have that shock absorber, uh, you know, to dampen the insulin, uh, direct injection of insulin that your pancreas has got to spit out once you eat, you know, a slice of pie or something. So the, the deal is she cooks dinner, I clean the dishes. So then once we get done eating, she runs off to like lay down and uh, look at her phone. And like, like since I'm on the phone all the time, but she's a uh, hypocrite because she's on the phone all the time. But she's in complete denial when I tell her that she's on the phone all the time. Anyhow, she runs to the phone. I'm like, all right, what do I got to do? Put on some white snake here, throw a little white snake on. The next thing you know, I go over to I go over to empty out the first dish into the garbage can, and I'm like, "Dip boop, beep boop." The the fucking supercomputer goes on, bing bang boom, zip bang boom, and I look in the in the garbage and I'm like, "There's a fucking sack of tootsie rolls in there somewhere." So I'm like, I look around and I start digging through this trash. We're talking egg yolk on my hand. Uh, syrup from breakfasts of, of your, uh, I, I'm, I'm digging through, I mean, salt and pepper. My hands, it looked like I just pulled my hands out. I, I don't even know how to explain it to you. It was like I was, I was rummaging through the Staten Island dump. And I get to the bottom of the trash can and I'm like, well, this is what, this is what my life's become. Oh my God. M remember what it was the thing in school? Somebody would throw something out and they needed it. They'd throw out their pen by accident and they would dig through the trash. Garbage picker! Garbage picker! And the person would be like, <laughs> <laughs> in school, you couldn't get away with anything like that. Or the greatest one was, Dick! <laughs> <laughs> but somebody would come out from the cafeteria and drop their chocolate milk on the floor. Remember? It was like that cardboard a container that would just like pop and then open up all over the floor. And then you'd hear, Dick! 
That's one of the all time classics. <laughs> or they drop their lunch tray and the fucking Thursday, you know, menu pizza would go cheese down onto the floor. Dick. <laughs> That's the best. Anyhow. I get down to the bottom of the trash can. I'm like, no Tootsie Rolls. And I got news for you right now. When you eat Tootsie Rolls, there's something about the the proportion. They're small like this. We'll get to that. So I'm like, oh my God, she didn't throw them out. She hid them. Now I turn on the old fucking sugar detector. I'm like, I'm, all, I'm scanning the kitchen, in and out of the cabinets, the top shelves. I got eyes everywhere. I said, this is where I, I have to understand my wife's anatomy. This is how deep it's going. She's short. I'm scanning down below. And sure enough, in the pantry on the bottom shelf, because she knows my pet peeve in life is bending over. I get down on my hands and knees. And all the way in the back of the shelf, I see... The shiny bag, the edge of the orange and white stripe for the Tootsie Roll. I re I reached in there like, like Flash Gordon into that, that dung heap where that beetle was. That's one of the most stressful scenes in a movie I've ever seen. You ever see that scene? Where he reaches into that, that, that ant tail of death. Flash Gordon! I reach in there, I grab the Tootsie Rolls, I head over to the countertop, and now she's gone. I dump half of it out onto the, the countertop, I stuff it back on the, and it's like, in the still of the night, a bit of zip, bit, bitting, bite of the bing, but a boom! Stick it down! Come on, David Coverdale, and I'm taking the I'm taking the Tootsie Rolls, and their size is just perfect. Number one, and it's so satisfying when you pull on both ends. This is how candy used to be wrapped. It's a wax paper, and you pull on both ends, and it just goes, does like a little spin. And they open right up and you pop them in. There's no stickiness. This is like perfect packaging. You understand? I got a gallon of milk the other day. I couldn't take the top off. You know the pull top on the gallon of milk they put on there? The freshness top? I couldn't take it off. I want to be in charge of packing down at Delwood. One of my pet peeves in life is a cereal. Remember when you'd get a certain cereals, you'd open them up and you'd be like, <sighs> and they'd open right up. That was Captain Crunch. Captain Crunch would go, and you'd open it right up. But if you got Frosted Flakes, good luck with that. It was like that burnt seal, crimp seal. You'd be like, and then rip like a hole in the side of it. And like, all right, this, this, uh, this, this box of cereal is trash from here on out. Anyhow, what are we talking about? I start dumping the Tootsie Rolls down. I mean, I don't... They, they became more delicious because of the taboo at that point. I found them. I won. It was victory. You understand? And, oh. <sighs> yeah. And this time I took the wrappers and I bunched them all together. And I, I, I rolled up my sleeve and I stuck them all the way at the bottom of the trash. <sighs> oh, yeah. Good luck finding that, bitch. Come on! Come on. I almost want to leave an empty bag in there of the Tootsie Rolls. Just so she finds it and says, huh. Huh. I, I, I got Callahan here. Look at this. Read this all over the place. She's not even in the holster. What kind of police officer are we? All right. All right. Wait, let, you know... A police scanner took a hit the other the other week. I don't I don't even know if it works. But you know what? Guess what? We're policemen. We're not plumbers. We don't go on strike. 
That works. Like that was scanning for crimes. Yeah. Gonna take a, a lot more than that to stop the realistic P Patrolman Pro 77A UHF high low scanner. Sip of coffee for that fucking thing. Got this guy at work. He's into Disney. You ever meet some of these people? They're into Disney. I never understood it. I remember when they opened up a Disney store in the mall back when it was hip to go to the mall. Everybody's like, "Oh, they opened up the Disney store!" I'm like I, I, I remember walking around in it because when it first opened up, you're like, "Oh, let me see what I don't know about." I walk in there. I'm like, I couldn't get out of there soon enough. I'm like, well, Beauty and the Beast. I'm like, what? Get the colors. It's like, wah, Snow White? Hack? I'm out. I've never been to, like, Disney. You understand? People go fucking, uh, I don't know. They go bots for Disney. I don't get it. I got this guy. He's always telling me. I'm going to Disney World. I'm like, oh, yeah? What, are you bringing your kids down there? He's like, no, I'm going by myself. Uh, I'm like, what? And you don't even understand. This guy goes like three times a year. So what the fuck are you doing in Disney? And the thing you got to know about this guy is, for some reason, every time I see him, he's he's got like a knot of money in his pants. Like he pulls out like a knot of money. I, I, I think he does this on purpose. You ever, you ever have one of these guys? Like they, they order from the coffee truck or the deli. And I, I, I all right, buddy, you got a, you got a bacon, egg and cheese. You want to pay up? Oh, uh, how much am I going to pay? Uh, it, it, like the whole roll comes out. Anyhow, I'm like, this guy's going to Disneyland. I said, I got news for you right now. And I don't even try to put it above Disney. When you go to Disney World, they know who the high rollers are. Oh, yeah, they got cameras all around that park. So when this fucking Yahoo shows up, I guarantee you they're like, they had the cameras on him. Like, he pulls up to the concession stand. And he's like, eh, let me get some cotton candy, please. And they see him, they see the big roll come up, and you just see, like, the camera zoom in from the pole. And they're like, all right. <sighs> look, at, look at the fucking bankroll on Numb Nuts over here. All right, get Mickey over there with some t shirts. <sighs> And they come at you. Balloons. Where is, uh, where are the balloons? Get balloons over there. And he's like, ah, this is great. They got t-shirts, balloons. Yeah, yeah. And they're just, the Disney knows how to make their money. What do you think these blood suckers are trying to get every dime they can out of your wallet? They're like, all right. They, they, they hit like railroad tracks. You know how the railroad tracks switch? They have like little fences that they hit to knock them in the most expensive stores. Oh, yeah. So we get this whole, this, we get this whole expensive display of, of paintings at my job. And I'm looking at these paintings and they're like, they've got, they got like Mickey Mouse on them. Uh, I, I don't know, Donald Duck. And the, the, the paintings are like $800 a piece. Next thing you know, this guy, this guy comes driving up on his forklift, on his forklift. He's like, Oh, they, they got th Thomas Kincaid paintings in. And I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, this is Thomas Kincaid. I got these paintings all over my house. Uh, I'm like, Oh yeah. I was like, they're, they're expensive. I said, uh, how many you got? He's like, they're all over my house. I said, you're full of shit. He's like, I'll, I'll take pictures. He's like, I got a big one in my living room, a little mermaid, $1,700. I was like, 
hundred dollars to hang the Little Mermaid in your living room? I gotta. I. These are the people I work with, guys. I, I'm not gonna tell you this right now. I can tell you about the guy that collects diecast cars. Okay. He's got like a thousand diecast cars. I say, oh, oh yeah, where do you put them? He goes, I, I put them in my living room. I said, your living room. In, right in my head, I'm, I'm picturing his wife like walking in the room and just handing him divorce papers. If that didn't happen already. Yeah, can you imagine? But, hey, honey, I'm going to put my, my, uh, enormous matchbox cars everywhere. How about that? Yeah. Oh, she's like, oh, really, honey? Okay, yeah, sign these papers so I can hit the fucking road or I'm going to suck every dick in the neighborhood. What's it going to be? I don't know. Theme song, please. I, I theme song. <sighs> Doors not even closed. A little theme song here. Yes. Come on. God damn it. Hey, you gotta plug it in. Believe it or not, it's it's interesting how electricity works. We can't, we can't end it like that. Can Dave Murray play that guitar? Can Dave Murray play that guitar? I tell you right now. You never met. This is like the perfect merger between blues and metal. Do you understand? Go to Prodigal Son. Killer's album. Prodigal Son. Just go there right now. Turn this nonsense off. And go listen to the guitar solo there. If it doesn't bring you to your fucking knees. All right, we got a very, very special show for you today. I get goosebumps. 
butterflies in the stomach. Do you understand? Because today we are going to do something that is rarely done anywhere else. I'm going to pick up Nick Rita number one shot of cap gun for Dave Murray. Shit. Burr. Okay. Today we're going to have a 16 bit war, the likes of which you've never seen before. It's vertical. We're going to take the big three, baby. Come back with me to what? 1992? Let's go back to 92, 93, and let's talk about the greatest vertically scrolling shooters for the top manufacturers at a time. Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, Turbo Graphics 16. With one caveat, it's going to be, well, the caveat is because we don't have our, our CD player, but we're going to bring it down to brass tacks here. All cartridge-based vertically, vertically scrolling shooters. That's right. So for the Turbo Graphics 16, we're staying on the chip. And this poor thing, this poor thing, has to battle against the mighty Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo. Okay, so number one, we're talking about greatest vertically scrolling shooter on uh, on the Super Nintendo. I, I mean, is anybody going to argue with me? Space Mega Force. Yes. So I think it should be Space Mega Force. The Sega Genesis, very difficult one, but I think we're going to have to leave it at Musha. To me, it was between Musha and Truxton. And I think we'll, for the sake of... I think we're going to bring it to Musha. Because let's face it, guys. Shut a cap gun for Musha! And on the TurboGrafx-16, it's going to be Soldier Blade. Do you realize what kind of bloodbath this is going to be? Picture picture time! We're wetting all the beaks today. Do you understand? We're wetting all the beaks. Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, and the PC Engine TurboGrafx-16. Now get off my back! I have to clean the screen for this one today. Let's do that. Yeah, we'll clean the screen with this rag. Okay. Oh, look at that. Oh, this is, this is like going from uh, AV cords to HDMI. Are you kidding me? With one pass of the, the old uh, oil change rag. Here we go. Of course, we're gonna need the controller. Of course, we're going to be piped in to the old Sansui. I don't I, Okay, so the way I, I think the proper way to do this is to start with the Super Nintendo first. Because on paper, didn't the Super Nintendo have every advantage? I could be wrong by that. But then you had the, you had the Sega Genesis, who was just like, uh, I don't know, like a prodigy when it came to to shooters, and then you have the PC Engine was like a little hot rod console. Do you get it? And so focused on the shooter genre. It's almost like the playing field is equaled out, isn't it? It's just so exciting. Let's get right into it here. Oh my God, you have no idea the type of commotion this would have started in, in, in the hallways of my high school. Space Megaforce. Here we are. All right. Oh, my God. Look at that box. <laughs> to have that box, huh?
Space Megaforce, presented by Toho. Oh my god. You would have popped a bone up back then to hear that. Coming through your game clutches, look at this. Oh, bring me back to 92. What did I say, 92? And here we are. Just a big city, you understand? Oh, look at the Super Nintendo pulling out all the stops. Big explosion in the sky. Let me guess, aliens. Was it the Chrysler building? All right, listen, I don't have time for your bullshit. Let's, let's get started here. Oh yeah, look at this gradient. Oh, I'm in. Oh, mode seven. Come on. Come on, Toho, let's do it. Standard game? Standard game, let's go. Watch me use my super bomb right off the bat. I always do. Yeah, see, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, look at this. It's almost like you're powered all up right from the start. All right, we got greedy. We got greedy. Sounds amazingly... Sounds amazingly like blazing lasers. <clears throat> Even some of the enemies look like blazing lasers. The sound effects sound like blazing lasers. And the guy's voice, when you get powered up, sounds like blazing lasers. All right, here we go. All right, you're not gonna... I got speed, that was a big mistake. I don't need the speed in this game. All right. I don't like the claustrophobia on level one, okay? I could do without the claustrophobia on level one. Oh, nice, nice explosion sound. Oh boy. Beautiful weapon power-ups. This, this, this speed is gonna fuck me. Nice relaxing musical soundtrack. Oh yeah, we're sticking with this for a while. Look at this. Oh. Ah! Oh, come on. Oh, jeez. All right, let's first let, let's attempt to get to the first boss. Oh, of course they can go through the bricks, right? Shot. Yes, this is what we like right here. Multiple shot. We'll stick with this for a while. What's with the multi-shot? It's not as sexy as the other weapons, right? But it gets the job done, doesn't it though? Yes, it does. Multi shot is very nice. Oh, 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 damn it. Very, I'm very jittery here, very nervous. Yes. This is a very important game. There's a lot of pedigree on the line here. We have to perform. We have to get to the first boss. Oh boy. Okay, uh. Alright, they're starting us right here. We'll keep going. Alright. I got a headache already. Let's go over to Musha, shall we? Now, <clears throat> believe it or not. The music was very sedate though, wasn't it? So it was very relaxing, beautiful graphics, beautiful sound. Uh, gameplay is spot on. But for some reason, when you hit the right the right shoulder button, you get the, I don't know, Super Nintendo, what's going on? Uh, 
All right, Mega Drive. Yes. Here we go. Musha. I mean, listen, this is the, this is the only way I could play Musha, all right? I'm sorry, I don't got the fucking Scott Ooch to pay, you know, $800. What, what's a copy of Musha going for? A thousand now? What the hell's going on here? Musha. Oh, here it is. Metallic Uniframe Super Hybrid Armor. Well, I didn't even know it meant that. <laughs> Oh, what do we got? A little Mode 7 there? I know, I know. Oh, look at this. Oh, super. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh. I don't know, Super Nintendo. You better run to the hills after that. Compile! 1990, compile! Oh, look at this. Yes, they have. All right, let's get started here. Jesus. Let's try not to use the super right out of the gate, huh? Oh, whoa. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Come on, how are we missing this? Oh, I had to shoot it first. Yeah, that would have worked. Jesus Christ! This is a ripping soundtrack. Here we go. No, 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 a little more. We need a little more. All right, all right, let's get it together here. Where, where's the super weapon? You don't have... Whoa! We hit the afterburners, people. Come on, give it to me. Give it to me. how I shut up really quick. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yes! Jeez. Oh, the colors. Boy. Yes, we're changing configurations. Holy smoke. Boy, if that music doesn't give you a sense of urgency, I don't know what will. Oh. Yes, here we go. Jeez. To be honest with you, I'm not really sure how the weapon system works. I've never played Musha before. <laughs> That's the truth. Yes, relax, relax. 
relax. That's the that's the secret here, right? Okay. Jeez. I'm sorry, you can't get this on the Super Nintendo. I, I, don't, I don't know how to explain it. My butt cheeks are all clinched up. Hey, you want to use lasers? I got lasers too, buddy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. You're out of here. I'm out of here. I got a headache. All right. That's a shooter. That's a shooter. You gotta understand something. Your whole body tenses up. Do you get it? That's a shooter. Wow. Okay. Yes. My God. It's gonna be a tough one to top, people. Okay, here we go. Soldier Blade. Oh my god, I get chills. Chills right down the spine. Just saying the word. <sighs> Where is it? Soldier Blade. Caravan, though. Soldier Blade. Here we go. You kidding me? Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> what a way to start. Oh, come on. Oh, bringing it on for you people right now. Look at this. Oh, look at the specs. Yes. Oh yeah, those are the, the, the diagrams. All right, let's get started here, for Christ's sake. Kind of a generic title screen, no? 1992. 1992. There we go. Oh, baby. What's that base? Oh, here's the mothership. Let's go, guys. Try not to use my super right out of the gate. Actually, I don't think we can. Okay, here we go. Oh, it feels great. You can't beat the feeling of speed and yet control we have here. All right. All right. Good. They're powering us up right out of the game. How fun it is to revisit this game. I mean, it never gets old. It's just so fluid and so fun. Here we go. I mean, we are ripping with the multi-shot. Very comfortable. It's like putting on an old pair of gloves. Oh, to get, let's get the lightning blast. Look at this weapon. Come on. Oh jeez. Okay, we really didn't want that, but that's okay. I mean, I like this weapon, but I don't like it at the same time. It has its place, but not right now. Here we go. Here we go. Alright. Ready for this? Look at the big sprite. Here we go. Come on, bitch. Yee! Doggy! Oh, boy. Oh, 
I'll be back. Yeah, you'll be back. Listen to that. On a turbo chip about this big, you hear voices. You kidding me? That was the mid-boss. What do you want to say about that? Oh boy. Whoa, the pageantry! Whoa! Oh my god! So theatrical! Power that sucker up. We know exactly where we are at all times. Hey, for all time's sake, right? Hold on. Oh, feels so good. Oh no. All right, here we go. Let's get rid of this, right? This is the beauty of this. I can get rid of this and go back to my lasers if I want to, and that's exactly what we'll do. Oh yeah. Doggy. Why not, right? Why not? Why not? Oh! Oh no. Oh, oh, oh! Hi! Listen, listen, all right. Guys, what am I gonna say? What am I gonna say? Super Nintendo, I'm sorry. It didn't It didn't have the juice. What do you want me to tell you? It's a great game, but it just didn't have the juice. Musha, Musha, very nice, very nice. But did it have the polish? Did it have the polish? Guys, you know I'm a fanboy. I'm gonna tell you right now, it's Soldier Blade all the way. I'm going to sit here and lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. This might be a little biased. But do you realize that you just tuned in to the greatest video game program in the history of human civilization? And you better believe that. With the 4K face! We'll see you next time.